Oops. I don't know why I kicked this, kicked this all off. What's up, everybody? This is Victor from Cyborg for Life. And I want to welcome you to episode 96 of Lim LinkedIn Live, where the patients interview the guests. And today we have a uh, packed panel of Lim LinkedIn guests here. I'm going to go around the panel and just introduce everybody. Um, so to the right of me or left of me, we have DJ Cyborg, my namesake. <laughs> That's right. What's up, DJ? How you doing, man? Good, good. How are you, Victor? Doing great, man. Uh, next up, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself. The German giant is back, Johannes. What's up, Jay? <laughs> What's up, man? How are you doing? Doing great, man. Gra glad to have you back. It's been forever. Um, down Thank here, you, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Um, we actually have uh, Alex, who is a... Um, a patient who actually has uh, achondroplasia and hyperchondroplasia, and she's here to talk about her LinkedIn experience. Welcome to the show, Alex. Hi. Hi, how are you? And then finally, we have um, a LinkedIn patient just wrapped up his LinkedIn a month ago. We have N joining the show. What's up, N? Hey, Victor. It's good to be here. Absolutely, man. It's a pleasure. Pleasure's all mine, guys. Thanks so much for joining. So, guys, we're just going to kind of go around the panel. Uh, um, and you kind of do like an update or possibly like a first introduction uh, of your LinkedIn experience. And then we'll go ahead and take some live Q&A questions at the end. So um, I actually want to kind of start off with Johannes here. So I'm going to move him in front of DJ because DJ has been here a little bit more re uh, recently than uh, Johannes. So Johannes, you've been so sought after in these last few months. People have been asking about you, uh, begging you to come back on the show. It's like, you know, this guy? Yeah, yeah. They miss you, man. So welcome oh, back, cool. brother. It's fantastic to have you back. So if I'm just going to give like a little background on Johannes, he did um, lengthening on his femurs. He did an, uh, quite a bit of length. He did 10 centimeters. Um, the really interesting thing about Johannes is that when he did that, he did suffer from wide legs or severe abduction because of the IT band wasn't released in his intro, uh, his first surgery. So he had to go back and get it done. But now he's healed up. He's back to work. He's living life to the fullest. So Johannes, go ahead and give everybody an update. Yeah, I mean, life, life is good. I mean, I'm moving around normally. I can pretty much do everything except, like, I mean, really hard sprinting. I haven't really tried since uh, since the surgery just because it's like, I don't know, man. It's, it's hard to trust your legs fully after after going through, through the process like that. But um, I've never been a huge sprinter anyway, so everything else I can do normally, though. Um, the only thing I would say that is still like a challenge is some tightness and like especially in the mornings or, or like after intense training, you'll definitely get a, a weight higher than you would if you haven't had surgery. Mm -hmm. So that's like my main uh, my main thing I have to focus on like physical therapy and stuff. Um, that's not as easy as I thought, but um, the, the the more you focus on it, the better it is, and the less you focus on it, the more you pay the price for it. So. Mm -hmm. um, you can, I can do everything, but I have to stay uh, uh, on point with the therapy, which I, I don't always do. So if I don't do it for like a few weeks or a month, I, I definitely feel the difference. Um, yeah, but otherwise, everything's great. Gotcha. And let's just get kind of like the basic stats update. So Johannes, what height did you start at before you got lengthening? And then obviously, what height did you end up at? Uh, I think I was between 173 and 174. And we did we did almost eleven centimeters. I, I don't know exactly like I don't know ten point eight or ten point nine or something. Oh wow! So yeah. Wow. Okay, I forgot it was that much. I thought it was just ten flat. I forgot it was closer what, to eleven. That, um, uh, and then, we didn't really measure me, but like that, so. Okay, but now you're over six foot, correct? Yes, <laughs> I think one one eighty five or one eighty six is is six one. Is it six yeah. one? I think so. You're yeah. six one, man. That's yeah. crazy. So he's now a German giant, essentially. That's what he's saying. <laughs> uh, but the interesting thing, so Johannes, you had two really interesting things along your journey, and it was the IT band. Um, a lot of patients were just asking about that in the last couple months since you've been on, and it's like IT band release. They want to know how important is that to lengthening, um, you know, the femur specifically. Uh, what, what was that like to not have it lengthened, I mean, I'm sorry, released, and then have to go get it released? What was the difference? I mean, I mean, it was like limp lengthening is is uh, is a difficult journey, so to speak. But for me, if it would just have been the three months of lengthening, and then normally, then it, it should get better, right? You, you you start consolidating and you start walking again, and every week gets better. And for me, it was like I was lengthening for like three and a half months, and then 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 
my, my whole process of, uh, of the IT band started. So I had like three months plus like five months of not being able to walk because of the IT band. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was the, the, the hardest part. It wasn't really the three months of lengthening, even though that, that was hard as well. But it, it was the five months where you're like, oh, well, shit, when I'll be able to walk again, right? Mm -hmm. And that was way harder, like, especially mentally than the, the lengthening itself was. And like, for that reason, I mean, if it was, would, uh, if it was just lengthening, I would have been good. Um, with all the pain and all the all the difficulty along the way, but the the months after were were way more traumatizing, like mentally and physically than the process process itself. So I was like very mad at my at my surgeon for not not lengthening the IT band. And as, as I told you, when I contacted him, he was like ghosting me and stuff. So I, I still hold grudges to this day because it's it was so unnecessary for me. And people around me were like, "Oh, you would never do this again, right?" I will. I always like I would do this again, but just without the without the traumatizing part at the end, you know. Yeah. I mean, the, the the three months were hard as well, but it was well worth it. And and then if it would uh, if it would have gotten better, I would have been good. Mm -hmm. But that's not how it was. So gotcha. Yeah, no, definitely. And I know that you know you found a surgeon who did it. You know, after the fact, what was it like? You know, not have it lengthened because I know we have videos of you on my channel of when they were really wide and abducted. Uh, to going and getting yeah. released, how soon after the release did you notice the the change? Yeah, it was funny because like I I I had the leg surgery in March and then I lengthened lengthened until July mm -hmm. and then I was unable to walk still even though I was consolidating and, and all the stuff. So then I got my IT band surgery. Uh, I think November 1st of 2021. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because there was literally like, like Dr. Betts told me, Oh, it, it would get better with time. And, and it, it uh, straightens itself out, which was never the case. It never really got that much better. Mm -hmm. um, and then after the IT band surgery, like two or three weeks after I was able to walk against, of course, very, very slowly, you know, very, very carefully and just a few steps. But then, the whole process of being able to walk started again, you know, just like it should have after I was done lengthening. I see. So it, it, it kind of frustrated me even more because I, I was like, okay, I just, I just wasted like five months for nothing, you know? <laughs> and, and it's also, it's also pretty stupid because like people who are like, oh, why are you doing this? Look, you can't even walk. And I'm like, mm. no, the process itself was fine. I, I went through the process. It, it was all good, but I'm, the, the 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 issues after just were unnecessary, which right. wasn't which wasn't in my control. But um, um, it was just such an unnecessary uh, five months of suffering for me. You know, mm -hmm. it was just unimaginable. So I see. Speak. No, definitely, man. I mean, I think that was a you know definitely a hard obstacle late in your way. But the fact is, now I think that you know you looking in high, having hindsight, you looking back and saying, hey, look. If only, you know, the surgeon did the IT band release, it could have been a completely different lengthening process. You could have walked sooner, um, practiced your walk sooner, and just gotten yeah, back to normal life yeah. a lot faster. So, uh, incredible, yeah, brother. But I got to say, Victor, I, I just want to say one thing. I, they, uh, they, they did cut my IT band, like, uh, at, the, at the bottom of the quad. Mm -hmm. And normally, or sometimes, they also cut it, like, at the top, at the uh, TFL, I think mm -hmm. it's called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I still have um, a lot of tightness, like sometimes in my in my TFL region. So, I mean, I lengthened to the max, and and it was still even though I did get the IT band release, it's still tight sometimes, and you have to focus on stretching and like massaging massaging that out. So, I really did the maximum, and I kind of pushed the limits. And even with the IT band release, I really you know it, it's right at the like at the I don't know how you say that the maximum of what you should do mm -hmm. and still I have to focus on stretching and massaging. So the IT band is, is loose and going through the, through the quad without any issues. Mm -hmm. So even with the IT band surgery, I still have some, some things that maybe some people would say, Oh, that, that, that's nagging and that that's, that's annoying. But to me, it still was worth it. Uh, it's still worth it, man. You got your height out of it. No, definitely, man. Um, so I know the the other part, is now that you've recovered fully, you've mentioned 
that you might be thinking about tibias. You mentioned this to me, but I'm bringing it out to everybody now. You, you mentioned that. Yeah. Talk about your interest in getting the other segment done. Yeah, I just, I just thought, thought about it like a few months ago, and I was like, <laughs> hmm, I would be up for the challenge again, you know, because like to me, it, it, it's like I could do this with, without all these issues, and I would recover just fine, especially if I had the dis discipline to, to do the therapy and to do the, you know, to do the work doing lengthening. So I would like to prove myself again that I could do it without these issues. Uh -huh. But the thing I don't know is with my IT band, if that would even, even uh, be possible, you know, to, uh -huh. to lengthen it even more. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't talked to any surgeons yet about that. But of course, that would be the first thing I, I would uh, clear out because, um, I mean, I, w I won't risk again to not be able to walk now. So, yeah, um, okay. I hear you. No, that makes sense. Just, just a thought, but um, yeah. yeah. And it's also like a money, it's a money thing, you know, it, it's extremely costly. And I would pay like, I think again, close to 50K again, like, like for the second segment now. Mm -hmm. So, I would only do it if, if everything was perfect. Like I would trust the this, this surgeon 100% and he says, yeah, it, it, it's, it could work out. Then I would probably think about it, but it's still just a thought and I'm yeah. still not sure if it's even, even possible for me with the IT band and stuff because the IT band runs, right, runs through the knee and even into the lower extremities. So yeah. I'm not quite sure if, I, if I'm already too, too far off for that. Yeah, no, I definitely, I think it attaches to the lateral portion of the tibia, the upper proximal portion of the tibia. And I think uh, yeah. that's the case, and it stabilizes the knee from that aspect. But then again, if you get your tibia osteotomy, it should be lengthening from there. So you should be okay. But again, definitely a surgeon question to ask. Uh, uh, very yeah, cool, man. Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's fantastic to have an update on you, man. So hang around there for a little bit. I know you you got to bounce soon, but uh, it's always great to have you on here. So we, yeah, I'm sure there's questions in the chat, but I want to kind of go around real quick and introduce everybody. So we have next up, we have Alex, who is a very interesting patient because we've never had, well, we've had one on a couple years ago, a patient who has both achondroplasia and hypochondroplasia. She had a uh, bow leg, uh, you know, varus in her, I think, tibia, right? Yes. your tibia and you had to get lengthening done now is it in both legs right uh it is in both legs but i have non-weight bearing nails so now i only got the right leg but then i will have the left leg gotcha and uh uh alex if you you want to tell everybody where you're um calling in from um i'm from slovakia slovakia that's awesome and you basically um got one she's doing unilateral lengthening one leg of a, a deformity correction getting that axial deviation corrected at the same time she's doing uh lengthening so how much are you lengthening mm -hmm. uh i only lengthened four centimeters because i couldn't get more so gotcha and uh Just you're using an internal nail or uh, external fixator um i'm using an um, internal nail because there was no choice for it Gotcha. And talk about your lengthening experience because it's a little bit different for everybody, you know, who gets lengthening done uh, four centimeters in the tibia. You also can mention your height that you started at and then like what you're aiming for. So I was, I used to be four feet, nine inches, which is 143 centimeters. Mm -hmm. And now I grew with my right leg to 147 centimeters. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yes. Left leg is still short. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, like I needed to do the surgery because um, I have a very poor ali bone alignment and also I was losing a lot of cartilage and I was just standing on my bones with my knees, which was gotcha. a really big problem. And I started to have a very big knee pains and I started to sprain my ankles and it was just so complicated. Mm -hmm. So I needed to do the surgery. That's incredible. So you had a medical necessity to get it done, but also going to boost your stature at the same time. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. So, so far you're halfway through, you just finished lengthening four centimeters. Uh, your first surgery was in, um, when was it? Uh, I think it was June, you said? Yes. Uh, June. Ju June. And now the second surgery for the other leg, the other tibia is going to be when? Um, on December. December. Somewhere okay. in the middle. Gotcha. And then how long did you lengthen? And can you talk about some of the complications? I know you mentioned that in the first uh, email to me. Yes. Yeah, so first complications were that I had some plaster allergy. So my whole leg burned um, under the plaster, which mm -hmm. was kind of interesting because I never thought that this will be the complication 
because I always thought that mm, it will be some nerve damage or whatever. Mm -hmm. But also, I have some mild loss of heat sensitivity. Heat and, sensitivity. Wow. Mm -hmm. And also, I have one part of leg where I don't feel all of the sharp objects. Ah, uh, like so we, numbness. Start, we tried to like put there some fork, or if I will uh, feel it, but I couldn't feel it. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, it was kind of, it is kind of interesting, but doctors mm -hmm. told me that it may return, but it may not return. So I'm waiting. Yeah, yeah guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I have very swollen leg. Like it is normal to have swollen legs, but I have kind of very much swollen legs. I see. Gotcha. So you heard her th say that, um, you know, the nerve numbness that she developed, it's a, it's a complication with the surgery. And I, that's what I really wanted her to talk about is that, um, it's unlikely it's not as common. I mean, people get nerve irritation a lot, but when you get numbness, she said it, it may or may not come back. That's just something you have to kind of deal with. But, um, in most cases is, you know, peripheral nerves do regenerate. They do come back. You get the sensation back. I had some numbness on my tibia. It came back. Uh, it just took, I think, little over a year um so yeah it definitely comes back and the more activity you get too so awesome alex well thanks so much for sharing your story we're gonna definitely come back around uh, i know there's gonna be people uh, um who are in the facebook group that you know have the similar conditions so uh next up we have let's actually get dj decided I, I love you man but i'm gonna put, i'm gonna put in in here for a second just because you're here more recently next up we have in he is a uh, lengthening patient who just finished his lengthening last month uh welcome to the show in Hey, Victor, it's good to be here. So, um, yeah, I did my lengthening overseas. I did it actually in Turkey, which I know is pretty controversial. And, you know, for, for some reason, I, I mean, I can agree and say I can, why it might be considered controversial. But, um, yeah, I, I ended up pushing, you know, past, you know, the, just about as much as you could get. And um, it's about one month now. I ended up sending you a video of where I'm at right now. I'm not sure if you want to show that or if you can show that. But, um, yeah, yeah. Overall, my recovery has been going pretty well, and I'm very fortunate that I don't have a lot of, uh, you know, I don't really have any nerve pain. The only issue I really have right now is my knee flexion. It's kind of stuck at like 90 degrees, but it's pretty good. It's, I've made some pretty good progress considering it's only been one month. And um, yeah, my walking is getting back to, you know, a good spot. So I'd be happy to answer any other questions you might have for me on it. That's awesome, brother. No, definitely. I'm going to, if you, you, you don't mind if I pull up the video you sent. Oh, absolutely. Okay, cool. So I'm going to showcase. He just uh, sent me this video of him walking uh, the other day. So let me just get it up here. Um, and, and if you want to mention when your what your height was before you started lengthening and then um, roughly what it is now, give or take. Yeah. So I was like about 5'6", and now I'm, you know, over 5'9". I'd say, you know, 5'9 and a half almost. So nice. I'm pretty happy with the jump I've made. I feel like... I've had this conversation with a lot of other limb lengthening patients, but I think you benefit the most from a procedure like this if you're around 5'6 to 5'7 because you go from being like shorter than 90% of all guys around you to then being, you know, either average or above average, which, you know, it's a pretty huge jump to make. Yeah. No, definitely. I think so. I think that I see a lot of patients go from that five, six, five, seven, and they go over average height and they're like, oh my gosh, this is life changing. And that's what I've seen. So awesome, man. So let me go ahead and pull up your video here. I just had it, it kind of jumped off on me. I'm terrible at these things. Uh, here it is right here. Let's uh, share this. All right, guys. So as you can see, let me pull it up, share my screen. Okay. So this is in, um, if you can see it, this is his walking. So I'm gonna play it again just so you can see it. So still using the crutches, but you can see he did his femurs. Um, guys in rip shape, as you can tell. <laughs> Kudos to you, hats off to you, man, for staying in good shape. But look at that. Walking around, looking good. So, and can I ask you, did you um have any issues with like uh I guess you call it wide legs or any duck ass or anything? Yeah, absolutely. Legs? Um actually in my removal surgery, because I did do external fixators. The doctor initially didn't even want to do the uh, IT band release, which I was kind of panicking about because I thought we agreed on doing it. So I spent like two hours in the hospital bed, like before the surgery while I was waiting, just like messaging people, telling them to make sure the doctor does it. And I remember that bit of anxiety, like when I woke up from the surgery, like, oh my God, I wonder if he did it or not. But um, he definitely did do it because, and I, he did a good job with it because when 
like before the surgery, my feet were pretty far apart. Like even just laying there on a bed, it had to be at least like for me to be comfortable, like two feet apart from each other. And pretty much the day after surgery, two days after, I could like, you know, touch my feet together. And then now I can, you know, cross them all over. So I think that IT band release was, you know, crucial. If you're going above seven or eight centimeters, like you need to have an IT band release pretty much. Gotcha. Great, great uh, advice there for all the prospective patients out there, man. That's awesome. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, all right, and stick around. We'll have some more questions for you, probably from the, the live Q&A. Um, next up, we have uh, DJ Cyborg, the man, the myth. He's here. So, DJ, what is up, brother? Yeah, doing well, doing well. <laughs> Until he fell asleep again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, DJ, the biggest thing uh, update from you, which everybody probably knows from the Discord, is you're walking now, right? Yeah, so I started walking, it was three days ago. No, today's day four of walking without crutches. So mm -hmm. today's also 98 days after surgery. Wow. Um, yeah, I feel like it's just like my calves are really um, tired after walking, but I feel like overall it's just muscles that need to be built up now. Yeah, build up that endurance, the strength, the stability, all that stuff. Now, if you can kind of tell everybody like what your starting height was, how much you lengthened, and what you uh, ended up at. Yeah, so starting height, I was around 174 and a half, and I did five and a half centimeters, so I should be right around 180 right now. Nice, dude. That's crazy. What's that like? Five, is that like 5'11 or around? Yeah, I think about 5'11, 180. That's incredible, man. Look at you, man. And the cool thing is, is that you did a conservative amount of length. You probably or that's probably why your your bones healed so quick to be able to walk with the. You had the precise nail, right? Yeah, precise 2.2. So it was a partial weight. I mean, precise is a non-weight bearing nail. And it did take, I think it was 23 days after I stopped lengthening was when I got full weight bearing. Gotcha. That's so funny. The guy's like, oh, don't let me stop you. <laughs> he's like, move out of the way for DJ Cyborg's coming through. That's awesome. Look at that. It's just three days on his feet and he's already have a pretty normal, decent walk. I mean, obviously it's going to get better, but he's only three days in. Uh, today being the fourth day, his muscles, he said, get tired. So for those of you who are taking your first steps after your release from crutches or walk or whatever, just expect the muscles to be kind of tired, sore until they build up that capacity to handle uh, the new walk. So, but looks great, man. Fantastic job. Um, yeah. So he did 5.5 centimeters on his femurs. Incredible. All right. So let's see who we got next here. We have uh, G joining the show. What's up, G? Are you there? Hey, what's going on? Oh, yeah. it's you. It's you, G. <laughs> <laughs> you're back. You're just you're just joining the show. What's up? How you been? Who you? Oh, shoot. oh, my thing keep going mute, on mute, on mute. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what's going on? Nothing much. Nothing much. It's been, so, a, been a few weeks, two, three weeks. It I has know. been. I, I wasn't able to do last week and the week before. I think we had on some other people. But you're here now. And I know you had an update with your x-rays recently in the early part of September, right? Yeah, man, it was hard trying to get these results what? because I'm because you know, um, Dr. Asia, he's in Baltimore, so I had to recently come to Florida. So, um, he was telling me to like just do the x ray somewhere in Florida and then send him the disc over. Gotcha to him, like send it over to his um clinic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then that was taking a little while, so I finally got the results and um. Yeah, as soon as I got the results, man, I was up and walking. Because <laughs> he had You're... told me, he he told me over text, he was Yeah, go ahead. No, 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 I, I, go ahead. I'm sorry, I cut you off. Oh, no. So he was he was telling me um he was telling me that um I'm good. I'm good to walk. I'm 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 approved to walk, which I kind of figured it because you remember on the I think it was, I don't know if it was the last episode or the episode before I told you I did two steps, yeah. but I, I I was just testing myself. I kind of <laughs> figured I was kind of ready to walk, but you know I didn't want to overdo it. So, anyways, I got his results. I got the approval. He said I'm good to walk. He said come off of the walker and come mm -hmm. onto a cane or crutches. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm just basically walking with a cane, but a like cane, I, yeah. like if I go to like you know the bathroom or something i don't I, I walk by myself i walk independently i don't i use the cane for like kind of like a little bit long distances or if i'm like going outside but in the house i will just walk independently gotcha okay very cool that's awesome well congratulations yeah. to be able to walk we have two patients on the board here that are now walking actually three we have in as well 
and the Johannes is walking perfectly fine. Now, Alex, are you using crutches for link uh, like right now? Oh, uh, I like ended using crutches after 12 weeks after the surgery. Wow. And like now I can walk, but I walk like a penguin, I can say. Penguin. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely going to take some getting used to. I know for a fact, especially since you had a uh, like an alignment correction as well. Um, it'll take some getting used to, but it's going to be perfect when you're all said and done. Mm -hmm. So just hang in there. It's, it's coming. All right, guys. So let's do a uh, live chat. Um, they got a lot of people asking questions in here. So let's bust through this because I know Johannes has about, what, 10, 15 minutes, Johannes? Yeah, we have, we have 10. 10. Okay, cool, cool. He's got to bounce a little early today. So we'll do 10. We'll try to get as many Jay questions in there as we can. Um, and then we'll hang around and finish up the rest. Okay, guys. So let's see what we got in here. So um, <clears throat> this first one from Lobo, he's asking, I have a question. How long will it take to walk normally after 2.8 centimeters increase in the femur? So uh, that's um, so that's a pretty, you mean 2.8 inches or centimeters? So centimeters, uh, probably not very long. D DJ, I mean, you're kind of at 5.5. How long did it take you to be able to get off of crutches from after the surgery? Well, um, that video that we played, that was 97 days after surgery. So about three months and one week, roughly Got this it. video yesterday. This video that he took yesterday took him about three, one, three months and one week. So as you can tell, it's probably going to be half that time, give or take. It's not going to always be the same for every patient. Um, but uh, yeah, man, that, that walk is perfect. Okay, cool. Let's see if there's any other um, questions in here for Jay before he has to go in a sec. But um, yeah, there we go. Let's see. Uh, I'm trying to see, Johannes. Here we go. This one's for you. Knowing what you know now, would you have stopped at eight centimeters? Do you think there's a specific reasons that, you know, the precise nail only goes up to eight centimeters? No, I wouldn't have stopped because I mean I, I would have been able to stop at eight, but but I wanted at least ten. And um, Dr. Betts told me like eleven was the absolute max for me. And I was, I, I told him like, whatever the max is, I want to do. So um, I wouldn't have stopped at eight for sure. Okay, gotcha. So you, you're you're dead set on that goal, no matter what. Gotcha. All right. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, it's probably not the smartest idea, you know, but it is what it is. Yeah, nah, man. I mean, hey, look, you you achieve, achieved what you wanted, and you're you're doing okay. That's the best part about it. Um, so, random boy is asking, yeah. hey, let's ask the panel the toughest part of the procedure. What was it, and if they're happy or regretful going through the difficult task of limb lengthening? So, um, let's get Jay on this again. Then we'll go around real quick and get everybody's take on this. So, go ahead, Jay. Hardest the part. The toughest part, yeah, probably the last the, the last few weeks of distraction phase. Like the, for sure, like the last few centimeters are, are way are so much harder than like the first few centimeters. Um, so the last few weeks, whatever you're like, then will definitely be the hardest in my opinion. But um, um, no, I don't regret it, regret it at all. It's like yeah. there there are positives and negatives that, that come with it, which is goes for everything in life, you know. But, but for me, I I I would do it again. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, let's go around. Definitely. Uh, well, we got, um, we got, uh, Alex, what was the hardest part of lengthening for you? Uh, my hardest part was at my first three weeks because I had a very big pain and also the plaster allergy that ah. my doctors didn't know about and it lasted for a week. So, but only the pain was the problem. The pain. Okay. Gotcha. What about you, N? Definitely, I agree. Um, pretty much after six or seven centimeters, those last few centimeters after that are really bad. Um, pretty much everybody else in the clinic with me at the time quit around that time, or they were like living off of opioids. And um, that's definitely the most painful part. And then I would say this, the removal surgery of the fixator, that like first hour or two you wake up after, I think it's because your nerves are all stretched out. You just, you feel like you're in literal hell. But uh other than that, I mean, I would say it gets a lot better after that. So, Okay, cool, man. Awesome. Uh, what about you, DJ? Um, for me, the hardest part was actually uh, day three to day five when, for some reason, I lost my ability to urinate. And they had to mm. put two catheters and take two catheters out in, like, a two-day time frame. And it was just so painful. But overall, I mean, I'm really happy I did this. I think it's one of the best things I've ever done for myself. 
that's incredible. Now, I was on a consultation the other day and somebody made a comment. He said, look, this is an, an uh, investment in myself. And I said, that's one of the best things you could have said because all the patients that I talk to, they say that if it turns out well, it's the same thing for them. So, um, all right. And then, uh, G, what about you? Um, the hardest part for me was the first two weeks. Um, after the surgery, it was, yeah, it was like hell. I would just say mainly like the first month. I remember when I was coming from the hospital and I had to go, I was in the Uber. They, um, they had did an Uber for me. It was like hell, like every, every turn and bump that, <laughs> that the car was driving, it was just hurting and everything in my body was hurting. So yeah, it was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> it was so terrible. The same thing like what Alex was saying, like that first, or even DJ, like the same, but his was not pain, but like pain in that first two weeks can be a uncomfortable uh, situation essentially. All right, let's see here. So this one from S is saying, can we see a full frame view of Johannes? Is he in with, is he good with his proportions after doing so much length? So can you step back, Jay? <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can see this. But oh, we can see your arms and your, your I torso. Arms, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, wait a second. Can you see this? Yeah, I, can I don't see know it. if you can see this, but um, put it on the floor. Nobody, like nobody would notice that I got something. Yeah, put it on the floor and step back. Okay. Wait a second. That's right. There we go. That's good. That's good. Okay, look at the guy. Looking good. Looking good. All right. <laughs> yeah. So we can see his, his feet. I don't know if you can see this, but it's like... Yeah, can you squat down? Yeah, okay. Look at that. Like this. He's doing squats right there in the middle of his workplace. Gotcha. Is that as far as you can go down? Yeah, well, right now it's probably like, like if you're not stretched out and stuff, this is as far as I can go down, yeah. Gotcha. Do you feel that you, that's where you feel that tension from the uh, TFL, that area? Yeah, but but it's also like um, uh, you definitely like the amount I like them. You definitely lose a bit of your ability to squat just because your femurs are so much longer than your tibias. You know, yeah. so it looks fine, but like as far as the as the movement goes, it definitely. I mean, I I could have squat better like before the surgery for sure, just because my my tibias were longer. So that's also like I mean, for some people it's a downside. Me, it doesn't really bother. Average, but the longer your tibia in in like the relation to your femur, the better you can squat that for sure. But that's yeah. also something that Dr. Betts told me before. Like the more you lengthen, you have to give up some of your ability to squat like before. And I was like, yeah, okay. That doesn't doesn't matter. Okay, gotcha. So that was something you were willing to trade off on. Okay, very cool, man. Well, thanks for sharing yeah. that with us. Um, and, and, sure. and, and also, just one thing I want to say, Victor, like the if I would do the tibias, that would also be a be a, a, a cool thing, you know. I would probably get get that back if I did the tibias, like even just a few centimeters. So for sure, that would make that better again, like yeah, the squatting. Yeah, you know? Yeah, because it boosts your knee up. I mean, because of the uh, and then basically your biomechanics are pretty much back to normal. Yeah, yeah. very cool, man. Well, hopefully, I mean, well, if you do decide to do it, you know where to come and share all that. <laughs> you know, just come right on this channel. We'll we'll love to hear from that. So, um, cool, man. So uh, Jay, I know you probably have to bounce in a minute. So uh, it's been a pleasure to have you back on. Um, you're always welcome back. Yeah. We'll have to do this again. Yeah, thanks, uh, So, so if you plan to, yeah, we'll do a longer one for sure. You'll do another one? Okay, cool, man. So we'll, we'll stay in touch with you, man. Yeah, of course. Thanks right, so much, guys. Take care. All right, Jay. Bye-bye. See ya. Yeah, you too. All right. All right, guys. So we're going to go ahead and go keep going around here. We have some more questions. Um, so in this question is for you. Uh, are you able to drive yet? Or are you still waiting on um, being released by your doctor? Um, I haven't tried driving just because uh, I really haven't needed to, but I'm sure I could drive. Um, you know, that seems like out of all the things I w I'm doing right now, I'm walking around a good amount every day, so driving should be pretty easy. Okay, gotcha. That's awesome. Vagris, welcome to the show, man. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for it's having always, me. It's always great to have you on here, man. You're one of the favorites we have there. You just, you literally just missed 
know. <laughs> you, I'm so, yeah. I missed him. I feel so bad. I'm going to rewatch the, uh, this show, but this show, man, I wish I could have talked to him. <laughs> I know. I was I, I, literally like seconds ago, like 30 seconds. I should have known. I, were you waiting in the, the back background there for a minute? No, I was, I had a meeting at work and oh, okay. I, I just joined. So Gotcha. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. All right, man. So yeah, we're just going to keep answering some questions in here. We have, um, we answered that one. Um, okay, here we go. Um, this is it. Ah, oh, here he is. Here he goes. We have Dr. Burkholz, guys. That's right. DJ Cyborg was on today and um, I had to bring on Dr. Burkholz. He's probably loading here because he's a surgeon. And um, DJ, what do you think? Your surgeon's loading up right next to you. <laughs> oh, man, this will be a legendary one. <laughs> I had to bring him on. And also, he's also our, our surgeon for the collective membership, which if you guys haven't joined yet, feel free to join. He's in there. That's how you can get access to Dr. B. So once he's loaded up, let's keep asking some questions here. We have, how's the pain of the procedure and how bad does it get when you pass five centimeters? So I know Phaedrus has done that. DJ has done that. And in Angie has all done that. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so in you're up first. What was the pain like after you pushed past five centimeters? For me, um, five wasn't too bad. I'd say the pain only got really bad after seven. Seven. Okay. Yeah. All right. What about you, DJ? For me, actually, um, it felt like between three to four. That's when you felt the tightness increasing. And once I got to four, so from four all the way up to 5.5, which is where I finished, it just stagnated. It stayed the uh, same. Same. Okay. Now we got worse. All right. And Phaedrus, what about you, Bear? Yeah. For me, I stopped at six and a half. But similar to DJ, three to four was the hardest in terms mm -hmm. of pain. I had an IT van release surgery at five and a half. So from five and a half to six and a half, most of it was actually kind of just surgical pain. Um, but not too much lengthening pain, which was great. Gotcha. Okay. And then we have um, G. G, you did eight centimeters on your femurs, correct? Yes. Gotcha. How was um, your... The pain past five yeah. centimeters. Um, it wasn't... Because the pain for me was really in the first month. Like, it was mm. really painful. Like, I had to still take Oxy. After the first two weeks, I stopped taking Oxy. It was still a little pain there. But past five, I, I was pretty fine. I was just worried about the numbness in my uh, right leg when I do exercise. Gotcha. Okay. So that first few weeks of pain, and then it kind of just, even when you pass, uh, like, favorite just the six centimeter mark? Yeah. It wasn't, huh? no. Nah, yeah, it was no it pain. I was just taking That's time. Yeah, okay. Was, well, yeah. That's awesome. I mean, you and DJ are like just cruising along. <laughs> All right, let's see. We have Josie on here. What's up, Josie? Uh, she might not hear us. Josie, you there? Hello, you guys hey. can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. What's up? Hi. I'm here. I'm currently on my oxygen machine. Still there? Yeah, I'm here. You're not hearing me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I, I'm saying. Oh, I think it's like dropping in and out there. Um, but yeah, let, let's let's uh, we're gonna we're gonna go keep going around the table here. Um, we have one for Alex here. Um, Alex, this one is asking from Benjamin. He's saying, "Did you get this done in uh, your country or out of country?" Um, so it's kind of a difficult story, but I was supposed to get it in a different country because there was no doctor that could do this in Slovakia. But then we found one that does it here. There's no there's no no doctor in Slovakia that could do it? No, oh, here's okay. only one and it was a second surgery. Like he tried it on me. <laughs> oh, oh, really? This was a first time thing for you? Yes. It was an experimental clinical trial on you. <laughs> Um, it was a second experiment for him. Oh my god, that's but, that's interesting. Um, what is um, like special at the surgery is that it is done on babies, so I was just a bigger person for him. <laughs> a little bit bigger, right? No, that's awesome. Very cool. Well, I'm so happy that it turned out well so far, and you're doing okay there, right? Kinda. Yes. Kinda. What what does kinda mean? Uh, the pain and some complications and. Yeah, I think that the process is longer than expected. I gotcha. Okay, well, it, that as you can hear from most of these people on here, like Phaedrus, and then um, uh, who else was on here that had a long uh, 
I think it was I think it was Josie. Somebody or somebody else had a longer experience than expected. Can you hear me now? There you go. I can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, my Wi-Fi was acting up. <laughs> oh, okay. How are you doing? I'm good. I was saying I'm currently on my Exogen machine right now. Oh, are you? You're using a little yeah. bone simulator? Yeah. <laughs> You're using that. Ashy's on the stream talking about bones. I love it. <laughs> That's great. Well, no, uh, Josie, uh, as you guys know, she's a limb length discrepancy patient. Um, I believe you lengthen three centimeters, not three inches. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> Today, I, you three. I literally was blown away. I was like, no. Um, so, yeah, and she had a little bit longer healing, too, because your bone wasn't healing as fast because she's using yeah. a bone yeah. stimulator. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. All right, guys, let's keep it moving along here. We have a few more questions. Um, in this one is for you. Uh, did you feel any tightness when you almost reached the full length? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you start feeling tightness pretty much as early as, you know, I mean, to be fair, I did do external fixators. And I think that pretty much right off the bat makes you feel a lot more tightness because the pins are going right through your quads and everything. So you pretty much lose knee flexion right off the bat. And I mean, after seven centimeters, after six or seven, you really start losing most of your range of motion. You kind of just, there came a certain point where I couldn't even like walk at all anymore with the walker. I was pretty much totally wheelchair bound. But the good news is after the removal of the external fixator, so long as you're good with your PT, it does come back pretty quickly. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, guys, stay on top of the PT, as you can see. That's good. Um, let's see, they're just asking about the surgeons. We have, uh, nice to see you again. Yeah, we're back, we're live. Um, we have, uh, okay, so Mike is asking, are you guys allowed to walk inside the pool during the distraction phase? So um, I actually want to get, you know, DJ and Phaedrus on this one because they're doing internal nails and also G, you, you as well, and Josie. I mean, we have a lot of internal nail patients here. So Hydrotherapy, guys. Um, are you allowed to do it and when? Phaedrus. Yeah. For me, once the first two or three weeks have passed, they recommend sauna and pool walking to kind of maintain gait. Um, and I came back to, I went to Germany for my surgery. I came back to the United States about a month in, um, had a month of lengthening, had ITP release surgery. And I started PT recently and pool walking is uh, highly recommended. And I started doing it and I think it's starting to help. Is it? That's awesome. Yeah. And when you say it's starting to help, is it more so because it's helping the muscle just, you know, stretch out from different angles mm -hmm. that you really can't do in PT? Or is it more like strengthening or just like the balance? What, what do you think that hydrotherapy helps the most with? It helps the most with buoyancy. Okay. So like because I had wide legs, my lower legs and feet, had a tendency to turn inward. So mm -hmm. after the surgery, the legs came together, but the lower legs still had a tendency to turn in. So it's almost like your your feet would turn inward. You'd be standing on the on the blade of your foot on the outside. Yeah. But um, with pool walking, there's just uh, an opportunity to walk without crutches or a walker. So yeah. you can kind of, you know, like I know how to swim, so I'm pretty comfortable. Uh, using my arms as well to kind of help balance, but then you can really focus on getting your gait correctly and you don't have any fear of falling because I mean, you're in the water. So uh, <laughs> it's very helpful. I, I didn't believe it at first, but I tried it and I was like, wow, this is, this is really good. You like it now that definitely, man. And in Phaedrus, I know that um, just recently, I literally just popped in the discord the other day and I saw that you were now done lengthening. Is that right? Yeah, I finished lengthening on September 1st. It's about two weeks. Okay. Ago. Oh, so two weeks ago. I was a little late. I, I, I think I saw the post a little late, but um, yeah, two weeks late. But that's incredible, man. So you're done lengthening. What was your total length that you hit? Yeah, I hit six and a half centimeters on my nice. femur. Exa I mean, 6.6 .6 on the left and 6.4 on the right, just a discrepancy to fix. Yeah. But um, I wanted to keep going to eight, but two doctors, Dr. Becker and Dr. Asiag, based on my x-rays, mentioned that there was not enough regenerate. And um, wow, it's actually Dr. Burkholz. No, I know, right? <laughs> the legend himself. I feel like yeah, the legend himself I'm is here. Right? But, um, to finish, um, yeah, I actually talked to Dr. Burkholz as well previously and shared my x-rays. And um, I think I stopped at six and a half because uh, multiple surgeons mentioned that to prevent the risk of delayed union or non-union, we're going to just let's stop at six and a half and kind of 
I think Josie has an exogen. I asked for an ortho fix from my, my surgeon to kind of uh, speed up the growth. Okay. Very cool, man. Well, we're super happy for you. You got six and a half centimeters. That's between the range of six and six and a half is what I would shoot for too. So, and that's what Dr. <laughs> B, Dr. B is a very conservative surgeon. He likes to, he likes that six uh, centimeter range for his femur patients. So incredible. Yeah. Dr. B, welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, it's been a long great. day again. Um, yeah. I can... pleasure, pleasure to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And we have one of your patients who I, I'm going to pull it up again here, who is walking now. I mean, look at this guy, you know, my namesake, DJ Cyborg is just crushing it on his walk. Let's play it right here. Close to the uh, what do you, line. what Very do you, um, so, so basically Dr. B, when you are you know, not just stretching, you're allowing them to walk, stretching, the walk the what do you look for in the bone when they have a, a nail? Is it how many quarters do they need? And what's, what's the surgeon look at to make that decision? Yeah, it's, a, it's an interplay between um, the amount of bone we see on the on the X-ray together with the patient's weight, together with the size of the nail that we inserted there, and it's it's sort of a decision we take with with a lot of those factors um, taken into consideration. It's not a single uh, thing that you can point for, point to, so it's not very scientific, unfortunately. Um, we are trying to look at pixel va um, value ratios and density of bone, trying to quantify that on the x-rays, but um, up to now we don't really have scientific guidelines as to, as to when to make it happen. So in this case we used a 12.5 nail, um, uh, the patient's weight was of such a nature that we could um, tolerate a fair amount of weight on those nails and uh, the bone growth was fantastic. Um, it must be all the food or all the supplements or the sunlight or the PT, I don't know, but, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's growing bone like crazy, uh, <laughs> which is fantastic. That's what we want to see. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's a fantastic thing because, you know, conservative amount of length and the guy's now walking at just 97 days after surgery. That's incredible. A lot of patients don't realize how, you know, gratifying it is to put your own feet back down on the ground and just walk without assistance. DJ was so pumped up. He sent me like messages. He's like, dude, I'm walking. I'm like, I see that. It's incredible. <laughs> so DJ, what, what was the, uh, your experience like, you know, you know, working with Dr. B and like, you know, doing this amazing you know, thing. I mean, you're walking in under a hundred days. Yeah, the overall experience has just been amazing. I feel like whenever you have a really good team put together in every category, when it comes mm -hmm. to physical therapy, when it comes to the orthopedic surgeon, the nutritionist, everything, it just, things just end up working really well. Absolutely. And it did for you, man. We're so happy for you. That's awesome. Awesome, guys. So yeah, we have Dr. B as part of the show today. I invited him. I was like, look, this is a perfect example of what you guys can get on the inside of the collective. If you join, <laughs> he's on there. He's, you guys can ask him some, qu some questions. So, uh, But today you get them for free. So if you're in the chat right now, this is your chance. Or if on your panel, you guys have any questions for Dr. B, he's here for you. So all right, guys, let me just um, continue with some questions here. I'm going to move this uh, video off screen. So um anybody have any questions for the panelists here i know it's a little earlier in the day uh let's see the surgery okay and if you guys see any okay hey, josie this one's for you from kevin w he's saying at what point did your doctor recommend you need to get an exogen device is it working for you okay so i think it's been about a year since I've done my surgery and my just do, looking at my x-rays, they were expecting like a faster bone growth and it was just not happening. My bones were being like extremely stubborn. So <laughs> then the doctors recommended that I should get this machine. So I think I'm like two months in. I'm about to do my next checkup next week. So hopefully by then I should see if it's like really working. Okay. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, I remember I had actually used one when I was doing my tibia. They use the exogen as well. Um, I hate to give them props, but <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They, uh, I had to use it like I think once or twice a day for 20 minutes, and um, I think it helped. I think it helped. I mean, maybe it was my age, maybe it was my nutrition. You never know, but who knows? So we wish you the best with that. Um, okay, so this one is for Alex, and then we're gonna go back for. Uh, I think there was a Dr. B question in here. So Alex, uh, they're saying you had your operation due to a medical condition. What's the prognosis? When will you get back to normal? Can you run after the surgery? So do you want to answer any of those? A uh, doctor told me that I will be able to be go back to normal at like half of the year. So like five months. But then I will need to do the second surgery, as I told before. 
and I will be able to run, but I was never able to run before, which will be really interesting because I will yeah. be well running for the first time in my life. <laughs> wow, and the first time in your life. Like, I could run, but after that, I always sprained my ankle, so oh, it will be really the, cool to try severe, and run. Uh, yeah, you have severe bow legs, and that's something that, you know, Dr. B corrects a lot of his clinics. You do a lot of deformity correction, Dr. B. She mentioned a lot of times that she would have knee pain, ankle pain. Um, for patients that have that severe varus, uh, is that something that they'll notice some symptoms that they notice as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the bow legs give you a whole abnormality in your kinetic chain all the way from, from actually from the heel bone all the way up, uh, including the spine if it's unilateral. Um, if it's on both sides, you know, you get foot deformities, you get ankle, you get knee, you get hip. Um, so, so it really affects everything. Um, and it's not just a, an appearance thing. There's actually pain, there's functional uh, kinematic problems, biomechanics. But I don't need to tell you all of that. Alex, you know that very well. So, um, yeah, that's the, that's the thing. You know, people think of it as because it's so visible, people see it and they think, oh, it's a cosmetic thing or it's done for appearance. But that's the least of the problems. The you know the the big issue is the is, is the the mechanics, the the way that our bodies are designed to work. Mm -hmm. And if you're out of alignment, that that makes it so much harder to do that. And and simple things like walking or running uh, becomes almost impossible because the energy you need to actually do that to um, become so much that it's almost impossible. So wow. so hats off to you to to go through this process. And I think. Um, you know, I'm always humbled by patients and their journeys because it is just so incredible and yeah. what, what people have to go through sometimes. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and Dr. B, like that second, part, that second part of the question says, what's the prognosis? I mean, you treat a lot of patients with that type of condition. Is it uh, a favorable outcome? Is it, do they get to get back to running and doing things that they couldn't do, um, you know, pain-free? Can they do it now? Yeah, look, I have very little context here, so it's very difficult to give you a, a sort of a medical uh, opinion based on, you know, two sentences. But <laughs> in, in principle, um, bowleg correction is effective, and if we can normalize the, the mechanical axis, that's what we talk about when we uh, draw a line that goes from the, from the hip to the ankle that uh, reproduces the way that the weight goes through the limb. And, um, you know, we, you can imagine the x-rays. And if we look at the x-rays from the hip to the ankle with a straight line down, that's how the force passes through the limb. Um, so if we can normalize that generally, that means that patients can go back to a very high level of function. And, uh, you know, all things being equal, that would be the expectation. Now, how long that takes is difficult to quantify because that depends on so many other factors. But, uh, right. but yeah, I would be very excited to see um, Alex running one of these days. Okay, yeah, also, absolutely. Um, I know that I for sure sent you the photo, so maybe you can send it to the doctor and like show it. Oh, your, 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 your x rays. Uh, yeah, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, um, I'll, I'll uh, save them here and uh, you can always reach out to Dr. B, um, you know, but uh, he's super busy now, so I mean, the guy's popping off, so but um, definitely, definitely, we'll do that. Uh, so let's see, um, we have another question here for everybody, and then there's another Dr. B question, so let's see. All right, so um, where was it? Darn it. These things jump around here. I can't see it anymore. Okay. Uh, okay. That's not true there. Can we go through puberty again? No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right. So what age do you suggest doing this surgery? So um, let's just actually kind of get it at like kind of a round table thing. So you guys don't have to tell your age, but what would be the ideal age that you want to get this done? So and I'm going to start at the bottom and go up. So don't have to say your age, but like kind of like yeah, I guess you want to answer this question. Sure. Um, I'm in my early 20s, and I was told my bone quality was very good. And it's true, I did do um, the stem cells after, but I've seen my x-rays um, from yesterday even, which is just one month after removal. And it looks honestly like a lot of people's x-rays after two or, or even more months. So I think the younger you are, assuming you're done with puberty, like you're past 18, your bone plates are fully sealed. The younger you are, I think the better for a surgery like this. Gotcha. Very cool. Josie, what about you? I definitely recommend like before your 20s. I'm currently in my 20s right now. But before when I was younger, I had the external fixator and I had like, I can't recall having any major issues with the bone growing back and healing and all of that. Now that I'm older, it's kind of 
taking a longer time. So I definitely recommend being younger. Okay. Gotcha. Um, let's go to G and then Phaedrus. Um, I'll recommend what well, my goal was to do before I was 30. That was okay. my goal and I got it done. So, but I will recommend like, yeah, um, after your, your, your um, plate is closed, like around like in the twenties, early twenties, like 2021, early, mm -hmm. yeah, the twenties. The twenties. Okay. So the earlier, the better. And Phaedrus, you want to take this last part of the it's question? Gonna... A chance. Should I, should I go back here? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'm early 30s. Um, with the group of guys and gals that started in May, June, I find that those who are in the early 20s have better regenerate in general. Okay. Um, might be genetic. I uh, don't really know, but I do think earlier is better. Okay. And I just want to get Dr. B's opinion on that since he's from a surgeon's perspective. What would you think? Age, the younger, the better, if possible? Are we are we talking about stature lengthening, cosmetic lengthening, or lengthening um, in general? I guess lengthening in general, because you know we have a few discrepancy patients here, and you know. Yeah, yeah. So for discrepancies and and lengthening in general, obviously the earlier the better, because um, bone growth is just better, flexibility is better, recovery after surgery is better. But this is where it gets interesting. Um, mental tenacity and resilience mm -hmm. only really matures in most people after after they turn thirty. Yeah. And, and I have found that my slightly older patients actually tolerate the whole process a bit better um, from a mental perspective. Wow. Now, if you're going to a surgeon that is going to meticulously follow you up and check you carefully and so on, he, can slow, he or she can slow down the, the, the distraction rate to actually compensate for that biological deficit that you have. Mm -hmm. But what we cannot really build is resilience and mental tenacity. That's something that you either have or you don't. Uh -huh. And most of us get more of that as we get a bit older. So so uh -huh. I've got probably a bit of a contrary view to most people regarding this. Obviously, from a pure bone growth perspective, the younger you are, the better. But uh, if it's a statue lengthening, which is a pretty brutal process, then my suggestion would be, you know, as early as possible. But interesting observation is that sometimes my slightly older patients tolerate it better. That's interesting. No, I, I never even thought of it like that. I thought, you know, you either have a high pain tolerance or not or grit, but it, you're right. Like the more life experiences you have, the more talent you have for something that's really rigorous and uh, hard. So that's incredible. Um, all right. So we have a Dr. B question here. Dr. B, so you're located in South Africa, if I remember right. So what's the prices of the internal and external nails you got available? Are the stride nails available in your country? So as far as his pricing goes, I'll post his um, link below after the after I get off of here. But um, yeah, if you want to answer about like um, now the stride nail, it's going to be called the precise max, but weight bearing nails, Dr. B, what are we doing with that? <laughs> yeah. So, so let me just circle back to the first part. Um, so for statue lengthening, for cosmetic lengthening, we use purely internal nails. I don't use external fixation or other techniques for that because the tolerance for error is so small. Um, External devices we use a lot and we use them for deformity correction, bone infection, non-union management, all of that stuff. So that is very dependent on the pathology that I'm treating. So the prices would go up and down depending on what we're treating clinically. Coming back to the stride nail, that is not available anywhere in the world anymore um, because it has been taken off the market for good reason. There were some really major issues with corrosion and uh, unforeseen complications. So that was taken off the market for that reason. Um, rumor has it and strong rumor has it that um, the Precise Max release is imminent. I don't know what that means. I've seen <laughs> imminent releases that sometimes take up to three years. So. Um, you know, who knows, <laughs> but it is them. apparently in the FDA approval process and hopefully it will be released um, sooner rather than later. Now that rollout will also be um, asymmetrical and it will go to the big boys first and then to the rest of us after that. So I am not foreseeing that I will have access to that before next year, this time, probably at the earliest. Um, which is possibly not a bad thing because then people would have had their guinea pig phase and they would have tested the nail on enough patients so that if something goes wrong that I would know of it before I start using it on my patients. So, you know, in a way that's not a bad thing for me to, to just follow a little bit later. But um, I'm saying that tongue in cheek, but that's normally how it works. I'm in Africa, so we always get the last 
um, the last rollouts of things. So that's just the way the world works. But um, because we're in darkest Africa, as you can see, you know. Um, <laughs> Um, no, so, so yeah, I, I'm joking again, but the, the reality is we are going to gonna get more weight-bearing nails uh, from a variety of sources. I think mm -hmm. um, Precise Max is one of them. Um, I'm actually visiting Italy next next month, three weeks from now, to, to look at the new foot bone, to mm -hmm. get an idea of what that's all about. Um, we're going, I don't know when that will be released, though. Um, and then there's some interesting other projects coming out uh, in Poland and other places where people are designing nails that are more weight bearing. My philosophy on a weight bearing nail is it would give us security and I think it's fantastic to have a nail that you can trust. I think that's sort of the most important aspect of a weight bearing nail. But I think to imagine that you can have the surgery and be back at work two weeks later um, because you've got a weight bearing nail is, is, is simply not true. Um, you have to lengthen muscles and nerves and blood vessels and bone and all of that stuff. And, you know, that takes a fair amount of time to recover from. So weight bearing or no weight bearing nail, the recovery process is going to take time. Yeah. And there are going to be some sacrifices that the patient has to make in terms right. of capability and so on. Absolutely. Fantastic. Sorry, that's answer. a long-winded answer again. <laughs> no, no, it was perfect. I mean, you got to think about it. It's like, you know, a lot of people think that they're going to get the weight bearing nail and they're like, hey, look, I can just start walking to the mall tomorrow. It's like you still have broken legs. It's just the sense of security. And yeah, you have a little bit more weight bearing capacity where you don't have to like be as careful. But uh, no, that's fantastic. Um, Bob Hunt, I was 58 years young. <laughs> that's right. So Bob, the circus boy, he was on a couple weeks ago. Guys, he was 58 when he did this. He's now turning 60, I think, really soon. And um, he's, he's now over three inches taller because of his femur. So Ages is, is is a limit. I mean, is a is just a number. Um, as long as you put your mind to it and really focus on your nutrition and your healing aspects. So, uh, let's see. We have a couple more questions in here. Um, that kind of blows. I mean, I was going to get this the type of money for the surgery in the thirties or forties. Some people never get that type of money. Yeah, no, definitely. That's what Doctor V was kind of alluding to. Is like for discrepancy, if insurance covers it, get it done as soon as possible. But obviously, for cosmetic stature lengthening, when it makes sense for you. Um, let's see. All right, so. This question is, oh, that's, it says hair fall, premature aging. Okay. So yeah, I don't even know why I asked. I'm trying to find the good questions. You guys see any good questions in here? Ash K. Yeah. There's no side effects like, you know, Dr. B, do you know any side, side effects like hair loss or premature aging because of limb, limb lengthening? I hope not. <laughs> I know, right? Or else I'm going to look like I'm 90 years old tomorrow. So awesome. All right, guys. So let's just kind of go around the panel and just kind of Get your take, your final take here, um, all the patients, and then we'll do Dr. B on the outro. Uh, so, in uh, your lengthening experience right now, you're kind of, um, are you still on crutches or are you um, completely done with the crutches? So, I'm still on crutches, and um, maybe if I uh, come on for another episode, I can show you my x-rays. There looks like a good amount of bone there, but just to be safe, I'd rather wait for some more bone there before I really start just uh, abandoning the crutches. And um, as far as my overall experience, it's tough because I did do it in, in Turkey and it's kind of like what that guy said. It's like I thought to myself, I'm going to have to be like 30 or something by the time I save up enough money to do this somewhere where it's in America or somewhere where it's going to cost a lot more. And it's true. I had an overall good experience and I'll go into this in more detail if you possibly in another episode. But I've seen firsthand uh, other patients who weren't as lucky as I um, was, though. So, it's kind of a trade-off, you know, if you want to get it done early. And I, I, it's tough because I can't really recommend it to other people. But uh, I can understand that um, that difficult aspect of weighing, well, would I rather have this done earlier for a cheaper price? Or would I rather wait until I'm older to get it done possibly in a safer, less painful way? But uh, overall, I don't re regret anything. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's the most important part. They don't regret it. But I'm glad you kind of made patients aware that, you know, there's a trade off. It's like you pay for what you get, you know, the, the more expensive. Uh, somebody just hopped off, I think. Uh, but, um, you yeah, know, that's that's fantastic. Uh, Josie, uh, what about you? Uh, yeah. Lengthening experience and any advice for prospective patients? Yeah. So my experience is that I'm a discrepancy patient and I had like my left leg was three centimeters shorter than the right. And to see that I did this surgery and now I have both legs on the same level, it's, it's completely fulfilling. Mm -hmm. The journey is definitely hard, but because I've seen the progress of like, 
actually standing and walking. I'm not completely a hundred with walking just yet, but walking and be able to be stable somewhat for lack of a better word. It's just like, it, it encourages me to like push to do my physical therapy even more and all of that good stuff. That's incredible. That's awesome. Now I know exactly what the feeling you're feeling is because when you see your legs grow and you're like all that pain is just drifting away in front of your eyes. It's like now I can walk on even uh, feet, even legs, and it's incredible. So that's awesome. Uh, G, what about you? Overall lengthening experience, and uh, are you happy with your decision? Um, overall lengthening experience was okay. I wasn't as tight as um, other limb lengthening patients for some reason. Mm -hmm. Um, because after the first month, everything, like I was tight at six, seven, but I was flexible. So my, my, um, PT was like, as long as you're flexible, it, it's not really, it doesn't really matter if you're a little tight or you get a little tight. So, um, overall experience was good. It was a learn, it was a learning experience sitting down for six, seven months. And I'm usually up and about driving, working, school. So it, it that definitely was a sit down experience. <laughs> um, and yeah, so like right now, I'm just basically trying to get my strengthening in with my legs, going to the gym and just making sure, you know, the legs um, is um, stronger. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just have to see how it goes from there. And just awesome. keep stretching. Basically. That's right. Yeah, just keep those those muscles, uh, you know, gradually improving every day. Uh, Phaedrus, man, six and a half, six point six centimeters in. How's everything going in normal life now? Yeah, I think overall, like, I'm just like the human body is like incredible. Like the fact that like we can even grow bone and destruction osteogenesis, it's it's incredible. And I finished lengthening two weeks ago, and the difference is crazy. Like I had tightness in my size that slowly dissipated i can almost do a squat i can do bunny hops and this is like two weeks in so i'm just uh really happy in less pain one thing that i do think patients should watch out for is opioid withdrawal because mm -hmm. i um stopped taking my opioids uh for about three or four days because i was just trying to go cold turkey Mm -hmm. And I experienced uh, withdrawal symptoms like um, tremors, anxiety, flush, fatigue, heat, uh, chills, and heat flush. So it was just really horrible. And um, I realized that it was opioid. I thought it was COVID at first or something or the flu. Yeah. Turns out it's opioid withdrawal. Wow. And now I have, um, I talked with my doctor and he recommended like a tapering plan about 10% uh, reduction per week. Mm -hmm. And, um, since doing that, I feel a lot better, but, um, overall I would do this again. I think, um, I've been out the past two weekends with friends. I use one crutch like a cane, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it works, you know, and I think it's very noticeable. I went from 172 to about 178 essentially. Wow. So, uh, it, it's just incredible. Um, how, different like it's such a small amount but i guess when you look at the the curve of of people it's like between i'm in the united states between 172 and 178 i feel like you cross a large absolute number of people and your eye level changes yeah. like and it's very evident when you meet people that you know before that like you can't hide it <laughs> I yeah. feel like after a certain point it's just you can't hide it yeah. but um yeah and in, in closing i think um you know, I, I'm really considering doing uh, tibias later with Dr. Burkholz. <laughs> I called him before, so we'll see. But uh, maybe I'll recover first and then uh, consider that path. That's awesome, man. That's fantastic. Here and before he hops off again, because I think his thing is clipping out here. We have a, a guy named Hani here. Welcome, Hani. Hey, welcome everyone. Hey, how are you? Fantastic, fantastic. Been following That's the the show and the episodes since like the 50 or 60 or so. <laughs> great, work, man. great work from everyone thank you thank you it's glad to ha have you here um yeah phaedrus that's that's incredible man thanks so much for sharing and you know when you said you're walking around with a cane <laughs> i was thinking phaedrus the pimp <laughs> you know it's like walking around with a cane and you going out to the clubs and stuff that's incredible um yeah. no honey so are you a um oh sorry phaedrus no i was just gonna say that my friends made that reference too they called did it they yeah <laughs> <laughs> um 
Hani, are you a uh, prospective patient or a current patient? Current patient. Just current started patient. With my surgery on the 1st September. Okay. And started lengthening uh, two days ago. So today okay. is my third day. Okay. Uh, did in Montreal, Dr. G. Okay. And uh, it was a long, long accident and, and a motorcycle accident. And uh, I, I hope this is the last... The, the last one like I went through I don't know if it's typical or no that I did a surgery that I fixed whatever accumulated through my operations and through the problems I had from the motorcycle accident as like I broke everything on the right side mm. so throughout the years the last operation was two years ago that I had uh, adjusted the position and um, of, of my femur of my femur and this September I did the lengthening because I'm missing between four and between four and five centimeters from my right leg. Gotcha. So, wow. This is so where you, we are. You, and you had... very to be with you guys. I've been hearing all the details, and and I don't want to jump in with a question, but whenever it's the right time, I'll just drop in a question. Fantastic. No, man, thank you so much for sharing that. So you're a discrepancy patient because of an accident. Um, and I actually want to kind of ask, uh, before we get to Alex, I actually want to ask Dr. B about this. So as far as like when people have accidents in their legs, is it, um, does it cause like um, issues with, does it actually cause a discrepancy from just a trauma? Yeah, um, discrepancies from trauma are quite common and uh, that can happen due to open fractures where there's bone loss. So where there's a wound and the bone gets missing, um, you know, during the accident, uh, it can happen after treatment of the um, condition where sometimes uh, doctors have to remove some bone uh, to get to live bone to allow it to knit. So if you have a non-union or something like that that's struggling to heal, we sometimes resect pieces of bone to, to get the bone together. So that might lead to a discrepancy. Um, infection that ensues, that could lead to a discrepancy. And some fractures are just longitudinally unstable. So uh, so they sort of collapse during the healing process and, and heal in a shorter position, a condition mm -hmm. we call a malunion. So mm -hmm. they're quite common and um, they are some of the uh, um, predictable ways uh, or predictable conditions to lengthen because uh, the muscles, the soft tissues originally were at the longer length. Mm -hmm. So to return the body to that length is a little bit easier than, for example, a congenital condition where somebody is born with something and uh, or a discrepancy and uh, you have to re lengthen to a new height, as it were. Um, and cosmetic lengthening also falls into that category where we're going beyond what nature, nature intended. So, so we're putting a lot of extra strain on muscles and tendons and nerves and so on. And mm -hmm. that's why, you know, I'm so conservative with my, my goals. But the beauty is, I mean, leg length discrepancy after trauma, even if you lose 10 centimeters, we can probably return that to you quite safely. Right. Um, whereas if we want to do a 10 centimeter femoral lengthening for cosmetic purposes, that's a completely different ballgame. Right. Because you're pushing past it. Yeah, no, that, yeah, that's exactly. incredible. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, and then Alex. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just so your overall experience. I mean, you're getting it done unilaterally for and you're also getting bow leg correction correction um, for all the other achondroplasia and hypochondroplasia patients out there. I know there's a lot of them that contact me. Um, what can you explain about your lengthening experience? And would you suggest if they're in a similar situation as you that they should suggest uh, consulting with a surgeon? So um, I would really suggest it because it like your pain will go away. And also um, they told me that if I wouldn't get the surgery, I will not be able to walk in my thirties. Wow. And so really I had like no choice. So yeah, it's worth yeah. it. And I it's don't worth. know. Yeah, no, definitely. And I know that, you know, obviously uh, there's more content that you have. You have a YouTube channel, correct? Yeah, and I will plug it. I will definitely put it below. Uh, once I get off stream, I'll find it and I'll put it below. So people, if you want to go out and you know learn more about Alex's story, reach out to her and all that, you can definitely check it out. Uh, just give me a little bit of time and I'll put it below. So awesome. Awesome, guys. And then TJ, I have not forgot about you. <laughs> here you are. Let me put you in the middle there. Hold on. There you go. All right. Switch you with phaedrus. DJ Cyborg, 5.5 centimeters on your femurs, now walking at on, under 100 days. Would you, did, we, did we already get your experience? No, I didn't. Yeah. So tell everybody, um, in, in a nutshell, would you do this again? And do you have any regrets? 
I I would absolutely do this again. I, I mentioned it earlier. I said this is one of the best things I did for myself. And I even was joking around with a few people a few days ago. I said if I were to wake up and this was a dream and I was back to day one <laughs> in that hospital on that bed, I would be really like forward to going through with it again. Minus probably the the catheter part. For me, the catheter was just, yeah, I can't I can't do that again for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, everything else I can do again. That's awesome, man. Yeah, no, that's that's a necessary part though. You got to get the the, the the waste out. So that's cool. Um, so we got a few more questions in here, and then we're gonna call it uh, quits. But guys, as you can see, having Doctor B here, uh, so inside the collective membership, which I'll post the link below if you want to check that out. Um, every month we'll do like a live Q and A inside our exclusive collective membership with Doctor B. You can ask him questions in there. Um, so if you have concerns about if you're lengthening it at a different clinic or whatever, and you're like, hey, look, I don't know, so but if this is the right choice or something you can bounce it off of him fantastic surgeon he'll be in the collective there um so definitely check it out afterwards and i'll have his link as well so you can consult with him so uh dr b this question here is from mohead and he's asking is arm lengthening safe and is it worth it yeah whether it's worth it is a question that only you can answer um mm. so that part i won't get into but is it safe um if we're talking about humerus lengthening, upper arm lengthening, then that is as safe as femur and tibia lengthening. Um, forearm lengthening is a different ballgame. Forearm lengthening is completely different um, because there's such a density of structures in the forearm, nerves, blood vessels, muscles. Uh, so from a functional recovery perspective, that's not really predictable. But a humerus loves being lengthened. They lengthen very well, and most of us who do lots of lengthenings have lengthened a number of humerus bones and, and they respond very well. Okay. Very cool. So it is possible to do that. And then this other question for you. Ask. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Alex. Sorry. Yeah. They told me that maybe it will be better for my arms to be lengthened. Like, will they do the surgery? If they will do the surgery, will they do both arms at a time or? Are you that would normally how? depend on your, on your surgeon, but, um, because we don't walk on our arms, uh, you know, it is possible to do both sides at the same time. Um, because it, it, if you do it separately, then obviously it's two surgeries and, and that becomes a bit more complex. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, if you have both arms that are painful, it becomes difficult to dress, uh, to do self-care, to go to the bathroom. All of this stuff becomes a bit more challenging. So that's just something to anticipate. Um, but I would take your surgeon's uh, opinion on that and, um, and go with what, what they suggest. There you go, Alex. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> You'll be walking around with broken arms like, <laughs> somebody make me breakfast. <laughs> like, <laughs> or like you just spoon like the oatmeal in your mouth. No, nah, that's cool. Um, okay, guys. So let's see. Um, anybody on the panel have questions for Dr. B? Anybody here? In? Any questions for him? Phaedrus? Hani? Yeah. Hani? Um, yeah, go ahead, for me. I'm considering wanting to do tibias at this point because I did lengthen quite a bit on my femurs. And uh, I guess if I am going to do it, I should probably get in contact with you, Doc. But um, the biggest thing for me right now is I would, especially for tibias, where I feel like the risk of infection is a lot more severe than on your femur because it goes straight to your bone and that could be really bad. I would like to do an internal nail, ideally a weight-bearing internal nail. Do you have any idea on when precise max might be like commercially available to regular people and what that might like, look like financially? No, the short answer is no. Um, we do do know that the rumors are that they would be substantially more expensive um, to the tune of, I think, $10,000 wow. a nail more or something like that. So, you know, that, that's the rumor. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Um, but timelines, we also don't know. Um, it's currently with the FDA, but, you know, that can take any, how long is a piece of string? We don't know. Okay, thanks, Doc. All right. Anybody else on the panel? Connie, Phaedrus? Yes, just a quick question. The, 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 I'm just asking about uh, what not to do. Uh, I know you you guys answered this question a lot. I would love to hear some comments or something from Dr. B because I feel he's like, uh, he, he got the case right away, just me talking about it for, for two minutes. I did my operation with Dr. Danovich. She was amazing. But I've been following as well, Dr. B, and and uh, learned a lot of what to do, what not to do. So honestly, it's been it's it. 
I haven't been having any pains, thanks God. I haven't been taking any um, any of the morphine stuff and, and so on. Just been on Tylenol. But, I, but I'm waiting for, for the pain because my last upper uh, surgery, which was the adjusting what happened, I just pinched, uh, pinched a nerve and that knocked me out for months and months. So this time, and, and then for a, a silly example as well, is that one of the locking screws from last surgery was not locked completely inside, uh, close to my hip, and that killed my hip, killed me training, the muscle, mm-hmm. everything. So, so anything tiny, just like the, the nerve or a, or, a, or, a, or a screw that's not super at the right place, and, and, and I'm tall and I work out and everything, and it, and it killed me. So this time I feel, because the leg is going to, the, to the, my previous kind of height or something, so it's going towards the right thing, so it feels much better than... The, the, the much better than how I recovered before, but I'm, I'm just trying to um, get an idea about should the progression of the pain from first centimeter to the fourth, because I'm looking for four. Is is there something that's normal happens that I should be expecting? That's number one. Number two, if there are stuff that are not to do, like I wish I'm I wish I drive not even for long distance or something. I wish I can drive to drive myself to some silly work stuff or some physio stuff. So question number one is the pain, if I should expect it. Question number two is things that I shouldn't be doing. And the last thing I should, I, I would just like to add so that I don't take much time off the panel is anybody thinking about doing two things at the same time, whatever it is, like the full uh, femur and tibias for, for cosmetic uh, thoughts or the arms, the two arms together or anything. My simple recommendation is guys, please, if this is for for my case, discrepancy or cosmetic, I would recommend everyone from experience of doing a simple one is every surgery at a time, uh, be, be towards this, even if your surgeon recommends you do everything at a time, because honestly, from my experience, something very small out of your surgeon hand can knock you out for months and months. So imagine I was wishing to do my alignment and lengthening at the same surgery, the doctor was trying. It didn't work. And honestly, now I'm glad. Even it took more time. But I, I'm, I'm tackling every issue that comes up on its own. Not imagine your two legs or two arms having big issues and so on. Sorry for taking much time. Thank you so much. Now you're good. Dr. B. Yeah. Let's uh, circle that one or attack that one from the back. I agree that um, one shouldn't underestimate the complexity of the surgery and the complexity of the process after the surgery. I think... Our patients on the panel would attest to that it is a journey. Um, it is not to be taken lightly. Um, your second question around um, what you should and should not do should probably be addressed to your surgeon. I think that would be the most appropriate person to give you advice there. But in principle, stay within the limits of the nail, stay within the limits of what your surgeon advises, and don't take chances. Um, you don't want to have any unforeseen complications. So that would be just a generic answer for the, for the middle one. And for your first question around the pain, what to expect, you, you at the moment in that honeymoon phase and you sort of wondering whether it's too good to be true, right? <laughs> so um, I can burst your bubble. It will get more painful. Um, but it does do so typically in a linear fashion. So it's not um, unexpected pain that just, you know, if everything goes according to plan, the pain will gradually increase as the tension in the muscles increase. And for, for post-traumatic lengthenings, that's typically what we see. And that typically starts happening from about the inch to inch and a half mark. So about two and a half, three centimeters, somewhere around there, you will start finding much more tightness in your muscles. And you might even have a bit of a nerve tinge at that point, but, um, but, but there shouldn't be any surprises. Uh, where you might find a surprise, and some people do, is by about day three. So for you, that would be about tomorrow. Um, you could sometimes expect a sudden increase in pain. And that's typically where the bones physically separate. Uh, So we do the osteotomy, we do a bit of lengthening, but then as we start lengthening at millimeter a day, at some point the bones physically separate from one another. And that is sometimes a pain. Uh, Mm. It's more common in the external fixator lengthenings, but we do sometimes see it in the nails as well. Sorry, again a mouthful. No, that was well, well answered. Awesome. And Phaedrus, I know you had a question for Dr. B before. Yeah. Um, for tibia lengthening patients, is three months generally sufficient for patients to return to a normal walking gait? Or 
at least board a plane back from South Africa to the United yeah. States and to recover. I uh, am a femur lengthening patient. I expect to be back uh, to normal in a few months and, and I'm exploring uh, tibia. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, thanks for that. Tibia lengthening is complex um, for two reasons. The one is we have to go slower. So we normally lengthen at 0.75 instead of, of one. So we we'll slow down the rate for, for, for the bone growth to, to catch up. Um, and also you're dealing with the ankle and the knee joint uh, in addition uh, because the fibula also lengthens and that has some effects on these joints. So mobility after a tibial lengthening is much more difficult than mobility after a femur lengthening. So to answer you bluntly, um, you will not be walking normally by three months, mm -hmm. but you will be able to probably go back home safely at that point but then you will still have to be watched carefully for uh, another three months. I would expect you to walk reasonably normally by about six months. But um, yeah, three months is probably a little bit short in terms of, of walking expectations, but you can definitely return home after the distraction is finished. Understood, thanks. Awesome, uh, so we have a couple more uh, patients on here. You guys wanna ask anything from Dr. B? We got Josie, anything? Yeah, so um, I did my tibia and I had the precise nail. However, I started walking without any help about three months now. The first time was in June and I did notice that um, when it, like right below my knee, there was pain. And when I would feel that area, I could actually feel the nail. So I'm wondering if it's because now that my muscles or whatever are waking up, I'm actually feeling the nail, but I still do unto this day. So I don't know if the nail is like getting loose or it's just that my body is adjusting to the nail why I'm still feeling the pain in just that area. Is, is that sort of directly below the kneecap or is it right, more... below, right below the kneecap? I could feel right the below, right, yeah. a little bit to the side or straight below the middle of the kneecap? A little bit to the side. Yeah, that's probably one of the locking screws, locking bolts that they use to lock the nail. Those can sometimes be a little bit tender and sensitive because they're right underneath the skin. Mm -hmm. And that's probably what you have there. And that should settle down as time goes on, okay. unless that locking bolt is loose and is starting to back out, which is a possibility, mm -hmm. although very rare. I don't want to plant any strange thoughts in your head. But uh, I, mean, I have my <laughs> x-rays next week, so I could see, yeah. but I was just wondering, like, yeah, is no, it it's, it's, or... It's, Probably you know. not something to worry about. If you are weight bearing on a uh, tibial precise nail at three months, uh, there is bound to be pain um, at the locking bolts. Mm -hmm. And typically the top ones are more painful than the bottom ones. So that makes sense. Um, okay. That sort of fits in. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Um, so DJ Cyborg, since that is your doctor, you're just going to wait till the <laughs> wait till the end. Alex, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. DJ. DJ's getting a short end in the stick today. He's my namesake. But anyway, uh, Alex, do you have any other questions for Dr. B before we uh, wrap it up here? Uh, maybe I have a question about my second surgery, which I'm pretty scared about. Like, um, I don't think that I will be able to walk and run in December. So how do you think that I will be able to move on crutches with my right leg that had an operation? A difficult one to answer without having the benefit of your x-rays, but um, but yeah, I think it's a it's a progression, right? So um, this is not a this is not something to to look at a quick fix or try and get to a end result uh, immediately. This is a journey. It's like anything that's worth doing takes a bit of time, takes a bit of sacrifice, and and it's like building a house. You know, you don't build the roof before you build the walls. You have to start and, and build it up. And uh, I think the, the point is, if you do that part correctly, um, you can build a much bigger house than if you try and rush it. So, so that's the way I would answer that without any um, knowledge of your case specifically, is that don't lose hope. I think you will get to a very high level of function. It might take a bit of time. It will take some pain and some, some procedures. But um, in the end, I think it will be worth it. Um, and, and you will fundamentally have a, a better situation than what you have now. It sounds like your surgeon is doing a, a, a decent job. So, you know. That's fantastic. Awesome. Um, 
Yeah, go also, ahead. Also, I can ask more. Um, I'm a horse rider, and what if I will fall or do some sport and bro and break the leg in the like in the passage where is the nail or something? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, trauma through areas of previous lengthening. Um, the beauty of lengthened bone is that it actually restores to normal bone. That that is that is the the the, the magic that Ilazarov discovered for us is that um, that bone regeneration actually forms normal tissue. Um, most other reconstructive methods that we have forms tissue that's not exactly the way it was. In this instance, we're forming bone that is exactly the way that nature built your bone in the first place. Mm -hmm. So so the beauty is that even if you break it there, it will be able to heal again like any other broken bone. So um, this surgery will not make you bulletproof. You will still be able to break your, your legs, but um, they, they will then be able to be fixed. It like be I was asking if the nail can break. The nail can break, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. They can break and they can bend, and that becomes a very difficult operation for somebody like me to deal with. But um, an experienced orthopedic surgeon would have seen this before. Um, horse riding is not one of our common problems. One of our common problems is motorcycle riders that uh, go back on the motorcycle with their nails, and then they fall off and they break again with the nail inside, and then the nail tends to bend. Mm -hmm. And that is a difficult procedure, but uh, yeah, that's maybe something for another day. But, but yes, yeah, so it is fixable, so don't worry about it too much. That, that would be my short answer. <laughs> Having said that, there's, there's another thing. Remember, if you're doing precise nails, those things have magnets in them. So if ever you are in an accident and you need an MRI scan, mm -hmm. then you can't have an MRI scan with the magnetic nail inside. So it is a good idea to have those nails removed once they've done their job. So uh, I have plenty of nails, so... Okay, so you should be fine. That's yeah. not a problem. And they, they're strong. They won't bend or break easily. Okay, yeah, the titanium nails. And <laughs> watch out, honey, all that motorcycle riding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just playing, honey. All right, let's see here. Alex uh, Savinix is at, uh, wishing you best of luck on your second surgery. So that's awesome there. Okay. Awesome, guys. So any other people on the panel that has questions for Dr. B while he's still here? Um, it's always great to have him on. Uh, let's see. Any other questions in the chat, guys, before we wrap it up? Let's see. What's the most height you can add with limb lengthening surgery? Depends. Multiple surgeries. We kind of answered that before. Um, did I hear that bones can separate from each other? <laughs> is this your first time watching the channel? I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> this is limb lengthening. You break your legs, you separate them. Um, all right. This is actually a good question from the box. He's saying... Uh, do you think that you can lengthen more than 50% of your bone without repercussions involving muscle or soft tissues or the, even the bones? Dr. B, take that one. Yeah, so a typical femur is about 40 centimeters long. 15% uh, of that is 6 centimeters, right? So it just so happens that my safe limit for lengthening on femurs is typically 6.5 centimeters. Mm -hmm. So you're right on there. 15% is about the sweet spot. Um, you can do more. Um, but that's where it starts getting risky, and that would need to be a discussion with you and your surgeon um, to try and um, find the risk-benefit ratio. But uh, for cosmetic purposes, uh, six and a half remains the sweet spot. That is my mantra, and that will remain my mantra. That's very cool. Awesome. And then uh, DJ Cyborg, here we are. Anything for your surgeon? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I have access to Dr. Burkholz 24 <laughs> hours a day on WhatsApp, so it'll be kind of so we've very, run out of things uh, to talk selfish. about. To be honest, yeah, very selfish of me to ask questions. <laughs> That's in here. right. That's awesome. I was just playing, man. That's awesome. Yeah, guys. So, um, yeah, if you guys want to reach out to any of these patients, I know. Um, in do you want me to post your burner email below in the description for people to reach out to you? Oh yeah, if you could feel free to do that. Okay, gotcha. That, that Phaedrus, if you want to contact Phaedrus, you can check out the Discord. It's free. Uh, the free Discord, Phaedrus is in there multiple times throughout the week. Feel free to check out his um, his journal on there. It's fantastic, well written, well documented, but don't share anybody's pictures. Uh, next up, Hani, do you have any way for patients to reach out to you? Because there might be somebody who had a an act. In fact, I know patients who have had an accident, had a discrepancy because of that trauma. Um, any way for patients to reach out to you? You don't have to. It's just uh, if you do. Me, Haney? Yeah, yeah, Haney. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I'm, 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 I'm sitting waiting for lengthening, you know. And I hate what Doctor B said. Or although 
it's beautiful, but I, I, I hate it, you know? Like, yeah. is, is there something like very obvious about the separation of the bone? I've never heard it on videos or something. So it's very interesting because I had the big pain last night, but it wasn't as much as a bone separation thing. So it, 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 it's <laughs> kind of scary. The hike of the pain, okay, I'll get prepared, but the bone separation, is this something everybody know about? Yeah, look, look. I, I may be using a, a slightly uh, interesting terminology. Um, it's basically, <laughs> as we start lengthening, uh, the nail has a bit of elasticity in it. So, so the nail will start moving, but the bone will not necessarily start moving as much as the nail is lengthening. And at some point, the nail and the, the bone catch up to one another. And when you lengthen the nail, the bone actually lengthens the same amount. And that actually moves the bone ends apart. And that can sometimes, that first incident of that happening can be uh, perceived as, a, as an increase in pain. Like I say, we see it more with the external fixators because they're more elastic than with the nails. But that phenomenon does exist. So that sometimes by, between day three and five, you find this sudden increase in pain. It lasts for 12 hours. You take a Netflix day and the next day it's better. Fantastic. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, anytime, anytime someone needs to reach, I'll, I'll drop you my email and everything. Okay, cool. Yeah, just shoot me an email uh, afterwards uh, through victor at cyborgforlife.com. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, man. Um, and Alex, I'm going to post your YouTube channel uh, below so that people can reach out to you. Dr. B, we have your your uh, your your page, and then we also have his um the, the, the membership, the collective membership. You guys want to check out that. And then Josie, I can't remember. Did you have a burner email or no? Yeah, I did email you. You did. Okay. Can I use yeah. that one? Yeah. Okay, cool. Because I know, look, the reason why I say this is because this past week, there was like five different patients who were like, hey, you had that guy on that show. Can you ask me? You know, so it was a lot of like me funneling their emails around. I was like, let's just get it all posted below. And then DJ Cyborg, he's in the uh, the Discord. You guys want to reach him? He's in there. Fantastic journal as well. So awesome. Guys, thank you so much for uh, joining uh, this amazing episode of Limb Link Me Live, episode 96. Um, feel free to reach out to all these amazing patients and Dr. B below in the description give me like probably 15 20 minutes after the show ends to post everything below thank you for all you guys in the chat for asking amazing questions and like i said if you want to join the free discord you can do that below there's a link for it and the membership i'll post that uh, below as well so um guys thank you so much and until next time this is victor from cyborg for life and all these amazing patients and surgeons signing out see you guys next time bye <laughs>